So the bearded dragon that you bought a few months or a year ago has become a lot less active of late and all of a sudden it's now not eating anything either. You've been on a Facebook group or an internet forum and the consensus there is that your dragon might be going into brumation and that it is going to fall asleep until next year. What does this all mean? Is your dragon going to be okay? And is there anything that you can do to help it? Well, if this situation sounds familiar to you or you just want to find out a little bit more about bearded dragon brumation, then stick around because in today's video that's exactly what I'm going to be talking about. The term brumation refers to a period of winter dormancy in an ectothermic vertebrate, or in other terms it means hibernation but for reptiles or amphibians. Why we call this brumation and not just hibernation is not really very important because the distinctions between the terms are not very well founded, so for the rest of this video I'm going to be using the terms brumation and hibernation interchangeably. The significance of this is that many of the herbs that we keep as pets have evolved to sleep throughout the colder months so that they can survive into the next year. Because herbs aren't on the whole anywhere near a state of domestication, in captivity the instinct to go to sleep throughout the winter is still very much alive. So when it's getting a little bit chilly outside and the nights are drawing in, that bearded dragon of yours is going to start preparing for the deep sleep, and signs of this include a reduction in activity and a loss of appetite. Now it is essential for me to point out here that these are also symptoms of a range of diseases, and so before you jump to the conclusion that what you're seeing in your dragon is just normal natural behaviour, you want to make sure that it is actually healthy. As a bare minimum, you'll want to get a faecal examination performed to find out whether your bearded dragon has any internal parasites, and if it does, you'll want to get these treated by a proper qualified exotic vet. This is the first and most essential part of the entire brumation process because any ill dragon which is then placed into brumation is not likely to wake up. So hopefully with what I've discussed so far you're starting to get an idea of what hibernation actually means for a bearded dragon and so I'm going to explore this a bit further by telling you about my own bearded dragon's annual cycle. The first signs that brumation is approaching are visible in my bearded dragon char from about mid-July, which is to say mid-summer, at which time there is a subtle reduction in his activity. Typically this involves him stopping doing territory guarding behaviours like running around the perimeter of his vivarium and head bobbing, presumably because the natural breeding season would be coming to a close. Over the next one to two months, his activity levels continue to decline, such that by the beginning of autumn, he barely moves at all except to come and get food. By the middle of autumn, Char has almost entirely lost his appetite, and it can only be said that he looks immensely sorry for himself. It's at around this time, so the middle of October, where he'll have a sudden digging spree and make himself a nice burrow, which is where he will remain, for the next three months of sleep. When Char wakes up, it is actually only really the start of winter, which doesn't really make sense because why would an animal try and survive the winter by sleeping through it, but only wake up when the worst of the winter is still yet to come? But then you do have to remember that where I live in Britain has much longer winters than where the bearded dragons will be found out in the wild, and so their internal clock which tells them when to wake up isn't exactly suited for all the cold that we get. Once he is awake, my dragon will be incredibly active with an appetite to match, that is until sort of the middle of summer arrives and then the whole process starts again. As keepers, it is our job to ensure that our animals are maintained in the best way possible, which means keeping them as close to the wild as we can, of course minus some negative factors like disease and predation, and including some novel positive ones like enrichment. With this in mind, it is absolutely imperative that we allow our animals to enter brumation rather than trying to prevent them from doing this. No, it's not much fun for the keeper having your pet asleep for a quarter of the year, and equally, it is possible that things can go wrong during the deep sleep, but if you plan appropriately, then it will end up being to the animal's benefit. 
And to this end, actually trying to stop them entering hibernation is really going to be impossible once that natural instinct gets going, especially with bearded dragons which in my experience appear to be incredibly stubborn in what they want to end up doing. It's therefore definitely safest and the best for the animal just to try and help them enter brumation as much as you possibly can. In the future I will talk more about the physiological benefits and implications of brumation for reptiles and amphibians, but that's not something we're going to worry about in today's video. So what should you do to help your bearded dragon with brumation? As I've already talked a little bit about earlier, about a month before you get rolling with the entire brumation thing, you want to get a faecal exam performed. What this means for me is that at about the start of September, I've got to send off some samples of my bearded dragon's excrement to a lab where there will be some tests performed on the faeces to find out if there are any remains of parasites in them. Each company that provides this testing service should provide you with some instructions for the collection and sending of the samples to them. So just follow these instructions and it is really quite simple. Now I appreciate that these faecal tests can be quite expensive and it's tempting just to skip, but especially if you are a newcomer to keeping bearded dragons, so you don't really know enough about the little details of its behaviour to tell whether any reduction in appetite or activity is due to brumation or a disease Disease, then getting the test done despite the cost is an absolute necessity. If it turns out that your dragon does have some form of disease or parasite, then you'll want to follow this up with an exotic vet. Assuming that your bearded dragon has eventually somehow ended up with a clean bill of health, then a month after you first sent off with the faecal test, you can proceed with the next part of brumation, which is stopping feeding the dragon. Ideally you would like to stop feeding the dragon at least a fortnight if not a month before it's going to enter the complete hibernation sleep. For me, this means that I no longer provide my bearded dragon with food after the very beginning of October. The reason for this is that there is a slight risk that if there is anything remaining in the digestive tract of the dragon, that this will begin to rot and cause infection, killing the dragon while it's sleeping. This leads me to the point that during the brumation period, you do not at any point want to offer food to your dragon, because in the very slim chance that it does actually eat it, you're only going to be doing it harm and not good. When they're in hibernation, their metabolism will have slowed to such a point that when they wake up after a couple of months, you shouldn't really see that they've lost any more than a couple of grams. The most involved part of brumation is mimicking seasonal changes within the vivarium. Although your bearded dragon will be able to sense external cues, such as the number of hours of sunlight there are each day, and also variations in air pressure, this won't be sufficient for them to enter a complete hibernation. For the safest and most natural brumation period, you will therefore have to alter the conditions within your vivarium so as to replicate the natural onset of winter. Over the course of a 30 day period, beginning at the same time as you stop feeding your bearded dragon, you'll want to make daily changes to the lighting hours in the enclosure such that by the end of the 30 days, the average temperature within the vivarium is somewhere between 5 and 20 degrees Celsius. Because I keep char in an unheated and poorly insulated room, temperature changes just sort of start happening naturally. But what I still do is every morning I set his lights to come on 6 minutes later and I also set them to turn off 6 minutes earlier in the afternoon. This means that by the beginning of November his lights are only on for 6 hours each day and the ambient air temperature in this enclosure is somewhere between 10 and 15 degrees Celsius. If your bearded dragon is in a centrally heated room, then you're going to want to reduce the lighting hours such that by the end of the month, the lights don't come on at all, or else it is going to be much too warm in the vivarium for the dragon to brumate. The final steps in brumation will come about three months later, when you'll be pleasantly surprised one day to see a bearded dragon waiting underneath the basking lamps to get a warm. Now you can increase lighting hours again, such that after another month, everything's back to normal. Alternatively, you can try just switching all of the lights straight back on without any of the gradual warm-up, and many keepers do have success doing this. In any case, when you do see that your dragon is awake, you can try offering it water from a water bowl straight away as it will almost certainly be very thirsty. You can also try giving it some food, but do beware that it might take them a couple of weeks to get their appetite back. 
If by the time the lighting schedule is back to normal, your bearded dragon still hasn't eaten, then it might be worthwhile offering them some electrolytic drink like Reptor Boost to get them interested in food. And this does actually sound a bit like a gimmick to me, but I have found that it does actually work. And then you're done. So I do really sympathise with people who are finding brumation a little bit tricky and scary because the very first time that my bearded dragon did it was a little bit... you know... Yeah. So for that reason I do really hope that you have enjoyed this video and if you did then you will subscribe to the channel and stick around for any videos that will be coming out within the near future. But for now I've been JTB Reptiles teaching you how to follow nature's example and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye guys!